The chairman of the BBC Trust, Lord Patton, says he's looking forward to answering questions from MPs on Monday after he was accused of misleading them over payoffs to senior managers. The former Director General, Mark Thompson, has claimed that there were specific untruths and inaccuracies in what the Commons Public Accounts Committee was told by Lord Patton back in July. Mr Thompson says the Trust was fully brief about the severance payoffs, payoff given to the former Deputy De Director General, Mark Byford. Speaking this morning, Lord Patton says he's puzzled by the claims being made. There's one aspect of uh, this very long deposition by Mr Thompson, which I found very curious, which is the focus on Mark Byford and his payoff. Because, as uh, anybody who works at the BBC knows, that happened before I became chairman of the Trust. It's slightly difficult to see how I could have been responsible for that. But these are issues that we'll explore next week with the PAC. And the truth is that Mark Byford is only one of the cases that we have to deal with. Uh, there were just too many over a period, over quite a long period. But anyway, uh, I'll deal with it next week um, and have no concerns at all about the remarks which Mr Thompson has made, except that at the end of the day I don't want to say or do anything which damages the BBC. Steve Barclay is one of the MPs who will question Lord Patton and Mark Thompson on Monday. He's a Conservative who sits on the Public Accounts Committee. These are the issues he's going to raise. Well, in essence, we've got two versions of events uh, being put by uh, very senior executives. On the one hand, uh, Mr Thompson and Mr Aegis are saying that the BBC Trust were fully informed of um, what was happening on remuneration and payoffs. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, Lord Patton and Anthony Fry uh, are saying they weren't informed, uh, and indeed, had they been told, they would have uh, intervened uh, and taken action. Uh, clearly, that's a very unsatisfactory um, position for the committee and the public to be in. Why does it matter who said what, when actually the issue for most licence fee payers is that the payoffs were simply way too much? Well, uh, it does matter in terms of the governance uh, and what the role of the executive was, what the role of the trust was. Um, and you're right, I mean, the, the key issue was the size of the payoffs. That's what uh, many people are uh, exercised about. Um, but it also goes to the heart of whether key documents were withheld from Parliament, whether uh, evidence given to Parliament was correct. Uh, those themselves are important questions. Mm. The main issue, though, would you agree, is that the BBC paid more than it needed to when it came to certain severance payments? Um, yes, clear, clearly that is a, an issue of concern as to why uh, the BBC was paying more than contractually was required. Um, but there is some dispute as to the circumstances around that. Uh, and again, it's, I mean, that goes to the heart of, of Parliament getting a clear understanding of what happened. Uh, and, and from our first hearing uh, and from Mr Thompson's evidence, it suggests we may not have had the full picture. Mm. So this intervention from Mr Thompson, the 45-page the document and various emails which purport to support uh, his version of events, which is, look, the Trust knew everything, um, that Mark Thompson briefed them orally and in writing, that would suggest that there really are questions to be answered. Well, clearly we need to explore it. I mean, the, the BBC have since come out with a statement, uh, I understand, uh, taking issue with Mr Thompson's submission. Uh, and as I say, these are very senior people. I mean, Mr. Mr. Thompson ran the BBC for many years. Um, therefore, his evidence needs to be looked at uh, and taken seriously. On the other hand, Lord Patton is the current chairman uh, of the BBC Trust and, again, is a very senior figure. But, you know, it's clearly an unsatisfactory situation when Parliament is being told um, such different versions of events from such key figures. Your chairman on the Public Accounts Committee, Margaret Hodge, said this week that the BBC is in chaos. Is that fair? Is that accurate, do you think? Well, I, mean, I, I would draw a very stark distinction between the rank and file of the BBC, uh, who I think continue to produce first-class work, often in very difficult circumstances, uh, and indeed I suspect many of whom are as dismayed at some of these uh, enormous payoffs as indeed the public is. And I think there is a distinction between them um, and the sort of cosy club at the top. And so 
Uh, I understand what the, the chair is driving at. I wouldn't say the BBC as a whole is in chaos because, you know, I, I see firsthand in the BBC reporters going about their day-to-day business and doing a superb job. Um, but I think there are serious questions about the top echelon uh, of the BBC, uh, how they've been conducting themselves, uh, and the relationship between the executive and the trust. Does that damage listeners, viewers, trust in the BBC overall when they continue to consume our radio programmes and our television programmes and our website as much as they always have? It has to be an issue of concern, certainly when I speak to constituents. They are, uh, their jaws drop when they learn that, for example, a BBC executive was paid more than a million pounds as a payoff or that uh, people were paid you know, three hundred thousand pounds in lieu of notice when they worked their notice. That people were getting six, seven, eight hundred pound payoffs purely because they missed out on a job, uh, and then they were told that uh, well, they could have redundancy instead. And and I don't think we should underestimate the public anger. Certainly, as uh, members of parliament, we see from uh, constituents on it. And at the end of the day, you know, it is the public that is paying for this. They're paying the licence fee, uh, and one in ten cases before the magistrate's court at present um, are pursuing people, uh, often very poor people, for non-payment of the licence fee, uh, which is a criminal offence, unlike, for example, not paying a utility bill, which is a civil offence. So, you know, it is important to the public, notwithstanding the fact that they still consume uh, BBC programmes, because, as I say, the rank-and-file staff of the BBC uh, are continuing to do their fine work. Some of the examples you mentioned there, I'll put names to those examples. You were talking about the Deputy Director General who received nearly a million pound payoff. Um, he was given notice and worked for nine months of that notice, but was given uh, a payoff for 12 months in lieu of notice. You all, and that was Mark Byford. You also mentioned uh, the Chief Operating Officer who left the BBC, Caroline Thompson, after failing to get the Director General's job. She took a £300,000 redundancy payment and a further £300,000 pay, payoff in lieu of notice, plus £14,000 in legal costs. Is there anything you can do as members of the Public Accounts Committee to put pressure on the current BBC hierarchy to recoup some of that money from those individuals? Um, I think it's, it's an issue of law as to what can and can't be recouped. But as, but as we know, they were paid more than they were entitled to in their own contracts. Uh, indeed, and, and, you know, but it is an issue of law as to whether legally there is a right to recoup or not, or as some of my colleagues have said, as whether people feel a moral uh, duty uh, or a reputational pressure to repay and those are as one individual did Roly Keating uh, gave back three hundred and seventy five thousand pounds that was a severance payment he received no I mean he and, and so he paid that now I don't know uh, whether he paid that because morally he felt he'd received the money uh, incorrectly or well it, it, it came after the National Audit Office described the payoff as seriously deficient yes but what I'm saying is you know, it being described and, and it having bad publicity attached to it is different to it being legally recoverable. Sure. Uh, and, and, and often these things need to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but I think that there's a more fundamental issue for the hearing on Monday, which is, did we have all the documents? If we didn't have all the documents, why not? Um, and was Parliament told the truth? And indeed, were the National Audit Office told the truth? Uh, I wrote, uh, after the, receiving the submission on uh, Wednesday from Mr. Thompson, I wrote to um, the National Audit Office with a, a whole series of questions. I understand they're producing a, a note, which uh, I'm hoping to receive today, uh, addressing uh, those questions. Um, and, and clearly, there is still much to discover, and uh, we need to give both sides a fair hearing to allow the BBC Trust to... Uh, clarify perhaps any earlier comments or come back on what Mr. Thompson has said. Uh, and also Mr. Thompson, who didn't have the opportunity to be at the earlier hearing um, and indeed didn't have the opportunity to see the full NEO report uh, last time, also needs to be given his opportunity to put his side uh, of the case. You raise the question of morals. Do you think morally Mark Byford and Caroline Thompson should feel that they should give some of their money back? I, I 
personally, I mean, as someone who is a former lawyer, I, I think we stray into dangerous territory. Uh, as I say, I know the chair has, has, has said there's a moral imperative for people uh, to do this. We've had a similar debate on tax. Uh, and I think from a consistency point of view, it is a very diff- difficult area once you start to go into whether morally they have a requirement to pay or not. I, I prefer to sort of focus on what the law says. Uh, and indeed, uh, to look forward, as Lord Hall has been doing, to say, you know, have we fully understood what has happened? Um, where, if anywhere, has it gone wrong? What are the lessons for us to draw from that? Uh, and how do we get a, a system in place moving forward that no, not only protects the interests of the licence fee payer, but, dare I say it, for BBC staff rank and file members, uh, also gives them confidence uh, in their own leadership? Because it cannot be a satisfactory situation for BBC staff to see, in essence, their former director general at war with their chairman uh, uh, of the organisation. That cannot be an acceptable position uh, for the BBC. How do you think this might affect the BBC when it comes to trying to renew the charter uh, and potentially see the BBC licence fee arrangements continuing from 2017? I, I think uh, it, it's difficult, really, to uh, have a, a crystal ball and look look at that. I think, to a certain extent, you know, one of the factors shaping that will be the hearing on Monday and 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 what uh, conclusions are drawn. I think um, we don't want to prejudge um, that discussion. I think there will be many factors that will inform that discussion. Um, but I think a starting point for the BBC to reflect on is if parliamentarians feel that they haven't been given the full truth, that information has to be extracted uh, against an organisation that is more concerned with reputational management uh, than being open and transparent. I think if that is the impression of the culture, uh, then it cannot be helpful for those discussions. But again, I don't think we should confuse uh, discussions over the future uh, licence fee uh, with the very talented work with the BBC, which all of us as members of the public listen to, watch uh, and enjoy. Steve Barclay, Conservative MP from the Public Accounts Committee. He'll be uh, asking some of the questions on Monday afternoon. You'll be able to hear some of that hearing on Five Live. This news just in as well, related to that story. The BBC's uh, head of HR, Lucy Adams, says she's made a mistake in her evidence to MPs when she denied knowledge of a key email about payoffs to the BBC Trust.